guys, Dandelion Song here. So you know how we've been looking at um, Back to the Future and the clock and the Ahmed clock and you know everything having to do with the clock and the clock tower and in the Back to the Future the clock seems to symbolize the Twin Towers. So uh, I was looking at this in the Menorah Gematria. Um, I didn't put the code here to show you that's Menorah Gematria. So I, I've seen this before, but I didn't really give it much credence because I just see this, you know, the skull and bones number everywhere. And then I was like, oh, I don't know. All right. Okay. I'll remember that. But I thought I would just go ahead and bring this up because, uh, because of the back to the future things that we just learned. So this, uh, as you can see, has the skull and bones number in it mirrored, right? The three, two, two, and then the three, and then it has a little Freemason number which on the end here. So I'll just kind of draw that over here. That's the CK. This is in the Menorah Gematria. Now the one way this is the Skull and Bones number, the other way it's, um, actually both ways, I think it's Synagogue of Satan. And then the 223 is something else in the, in the simple Gematria. And as we have seen lately in the videos that I've showed you, the Ankara, no, the, um, the Mecca sacrifice that happened on 923 of 717 pilgrims, which is three times 239. And this is the simple gematria for Roman Eagle. Not saying that's the main core meaning of it, but <clears throat> I think it's pretty close to the core. Uh, this happened on 322 Street on the corner of 322 Street and 204 Street. And this is London. So what they're telling you is this is cooperation between Skull and Bones in London over there. Now I also showed you Orion that's over there in Ankara, Turkey and Orion's belt. And basically that there's a phallus over there. There's a phallus in time lapse and we know how they love their obelisks and their phalluses. George, uh, the Washington Monument being the first one that I found with Isis sitting right on top of that in plain view. So the train is also kind of a phallus symbol and anyway that whole thing happened basically right there on the phallus. So go ahead and take a look at that. It's pretty weird. So we now, but what, so how does this, I, I haven't gone over there to see about the clock, but in Mecca, which is a little ways away from where this happened, but not far away from where the crane uh, sacrifice happened on 9-11, which is a calendar equivalent, right? This is a calendar equivalent here. And then there's another calendar equivalent of 10-6, and this is when we had the, the hurricane over there on the East Coast. But on 9-11, that was near the clock tower. Now, this is supposed to be one of the biggest clock towers are the tallest. They have the crescent at the top and this is not the moon. And it, I, um, I have to Wikipedia that again, but less, it seems like my memory says that that was the tallest one. I didn't really think a lot about it until I started studying the very elaborate and, you know, carefully crafted code in the back to the future movies with Robert Zemeckis, where he basically plays himself. Marty plays, Robert Zemeckis and Marty equals Robert Zemeckis um, using the Colel rule of one. Their names are off by one and in this case the one that they're off by is the word the. This is a, this is a new algorithm, back, back algorithming the pattern to find out how they pattern stuff. So I've brought you a bunch of videos about these Back to the Futures, and I know you think this is all in the past or maybe it's pop culture, but what we have here is a Rosetta Stone to understand more of what they're talking about. Now, I've also been studying um, Marty Leeds' videos on, um, and he has some interesting things to say about Skull and Bones. Up here, I did the simple geometry on top. And this is the menorah geometry on the bottom. So the menorah geometry is a 19 and a 16. 
So we know that we have the, um, you, we, and that of course adds to a 35, and this is the I in simple gematria and the UN in simple gematria and quite a few other things. But also in this form, the 19 and the 16, you want to, you want to realize that you have an 11, you have an 11, nine, you have an 11, six. This is, um, this is the code for nuclear explosions. We know what this code is here. This is the date. This is, well, they use it as a date, but it's not only a date because everybody breathes a sigh of relief when we pass these dates, but it's ongoing. So we have to keep, we have to keep looking for this. And then when we see things like, um, this man-made storm, this Patricia man-made storm that occurred on, uh, 10, 23, 2015, which is an eight, you need to realize that that's actually a 923 and that's a variation of this. So it's not over. And then when we see things like that happen, we need to say to the mountain move, calm the storm and be the, the one of the Colel rule. Where'd it go? Be the one. Be the one who collapses the wave, who says to the mountain move or says to the storm calm. Well, I, I do want to show you human being here. Be in the kingdom of God. This is pi, pi in the simple gematria. This is meant to be divine or heaven. And I believe that when they are using these numbers, where'd it go? Oh, when they're using these numbers for terror, they're trying to cover up actually possibly divine numbers. Like I believe that this is the union here. This symbolizes the union of, um, what's, how can I put it? So this would be ego. Like you need to have your ego and this is, um, sorry, freezing on the word, uh, Oh, enlightenment in the good sense of the word, not Illuminati enlightenment, enlightenment. So this is ego and enlightenment. This is a, this is a good achievement right here, but it's being used as a terror word, terror, just like the 23 is well, but the word being is pi, which is holiness. Be, be holy. This is also the idea of the word blue. This is why they put the Virgin Mary in blue because they're saying to be luminous right the 1221 here that's the code for that color be luminous okay so be in the kingdom of heaven which of course the reverse the full circle of this is the kingdom of heaven is within right this is be in and this is kingdom divinity is in your being. Do you see? All right. So Marty in the video shows that, that a human being also equals 35. And he's, and he said, brings that as a hopeful message to counter that, you know, in this is menorah gematria, sorry, to counter that Illuminati equals 35 in the menorah gematria. One, another breakdown of this is, this is 15, which he shows that they use 15 in their skull and bones photographs. I don't have that handy right now. And then this, I've seen this a lot and I've always wondered what the breakdown is. Well, it, there's a lot of breakdowns of this, but one of the breakdowns is this. To look at this word a little closer though, um, ill. Um, depends on, you can, you can look at this a few ways. So each of these, so this is a five and a, this is a five, two, two. And this is in the, in the, and then, sorry, in the simple geometry, this is a nine, 12, 12. Now, if you add, if you have a 12 and you add a nine to it, you get to 21 and these are the, these are the two primes. This is the 
the twelfth prime is thirty-seven, and this is the seven. The, tw the twenty-first prime is seventy-three. So these are, so this is kind of like a code through time, through the addition. Do you see? Um, it it adds, of course, twelve and twenty-one adds to thirty-three, and that's a little bit like luminous, right? But then they they are able to draw it this way with the I added to the L. which is which takes the 12 to the 21. So then you have a 33 code in there, right? Because then if if you add this the other way, 24, 24 hours in the day plus 9 then you get the 33. This is how I mess up my my drawings. So try to get that all together now. Okay, so then we have the U. So we have a nine and a six. We've talked a lot about nines and sixes. Let me just go back over this. The six and the nine is the keystone of the Freemason arch. This is the crab. Um, I showed the crab in the Da Vinci transformer code. Uh, this it balances the four elements, possibly the five, but at least the four in terms of the Mayan understanding of how this works. Uh, now, this is summer solstice. Um, and this is the 169th day of the year here with 169 remaining. This also goes back to, um, where are we? Hold on a second. What did I do with it? Is it right? Oh, no. Is this it? Okay, I'm going to pause it and look for this. Hold on. Okay, here we are. So you can see why this gets a little hard to explain. I just wanted to tie this into the date, skull and bones. Now, I found skulls in London and Washington, D.C. Please see my videos on that. Sorry about the light here. Uh, so this is the this is the code. This is why this is not, these are precise numbers that add to this. So we have the 19 and 6, and this is also raw, and this is also um, the cursive form of phi right here. So Ra is the first creation after the four sounds of the Ankh and their opposites in the fourth age of this of Egyptian, the fourth fourth age of the sun and the golden age of uh, Egyptian, I guess you could say religion. And then this Phi represents, I believe, to them destiny. Okay, well, so this is 169. See, this is. 160, the 169th day and the 196th day is encoded here. Okay, so we are getting, I'm getting back to this point of of, of the 9-6 right here in Illuminati. So the 169th day is 618. The 196th day is 715. That was the start of Jade Helm. Uh, this is in the simple geometry as an F and an R, the first two letters of Freemason. This is a G and an O. And this is why we have so much frog symbolism. So they think free, free is the idea of six to nine. It's going from the sixth dimension to the ninth and this played more of a role before we fell to the third dimension because now you know it really should be the three to the six. And we do see some of that symbolism but we still have a lot of six to nine symbolism but we're really right now in the third and the fourth dimension. But this is the idea of going up, free, and this is the idea of coming down. This is why the gods came down. Some say they fell. And they tried to act like it was a controlled fall, like, yep, I meant to do that. See, I'm a god. All right, um, that's what this is about, Elu. Now, I don't think it's a coincidence that this word is ill. And the ego can be an illness, right? That's the I, if you take it back to the, the simple gematria. Now, the U is 21. I think of this as the hieroglyph for the upper part of the chalice. 
Um, we had chalice symbolism shows the upper and the lower, the as above, so below. This is shown in Astana. I just did a recent video where we went to Astana. I don't think I showed you the upper and the lower part of the chalice though, but I do have a video showing the upper and the lower part of the chalice and also many chalice videos. This is one of the, you know, really core symbols that we have to work with. So, but this is the upper part. Now in ancient Egypt, when they had a chalice, they didn't actually have a lower part. They only had the upper part. They would just hold it like this as like a little stick. So this, this symbolizes the Trinity of Suns up here. This is Ra. This, uh, this is the wormhole of Ra, which is um, depicted in star maps all over the world. Not just 10 times, not just 11 times, way more times than that. Wayne Herschel has found most of them. I found a few. And then this is the lower. So this would be uh, often, and then um, the stem of the chalice is usually Orion in the star map, although it doesn't often line up like that in the sky. The Pleiades are over here. This would be our pyramids on the earth, which symbolize human evolution. So we are trying to become, we're trying to bring heaven down to earth. So this is all symbolized in the U. Now the U is also sev uh, three times seven. So this is the kingdom of God times three. And they do say the kingdom of God is within you. And I believe it is in the DNA. We carry the DNA of these three star of these three sons. That's why we are made in their image. <clears throat> and sometimes I feel like we are here to sort out their problems, like they're fighting and we all got their DNA. It's, you know, it's like locking all of the squabbling children in the bathroom and they can't come out until they make friends. I think that's what uh, sometimes, you know, that's one of my theories about what's going on here. We're all locked in the bathroom till we all make friends. And then we, then our DNA will carry the codes of the, of solving all these galactic problems. Okay, so men um let me find this. Min is 7, which is also the kingdom of God number. Um, there's also an idea of the minimum. Uh, let me find where I, let me find where I, okay, so in the simple, in the, in the menorah geometry, there's a 7 here. So this up here is the simple geometria. So ill is 33. U is 21, uh, just to make, just for your, this is an overlap. The LU is a 33 too. It's a 12 and a 21 together. That's that star matrix mirror, 1221 prime mirror that I told you about. Uh, then min is a 26. So there's more to this. It's not exactly the center of this word, so, but I do like to look at the core valence, the, the core of words and the valence of words. But min is 36, and this is the, this is this, um, the seed of life. And it's the, also the trinity of, of, um, carbon-based life here. It's, you know, 18 and 18, and the sum of, um, the summation is 666 and people can get afraid of that, but I think it's just about carbon and hexagons and, you know, that you're an organic being. But this is also the seed of life. If you take eight, one through eight, I'm going to not, probably not draw this right. This is an overlap. And then uh, there's more behind here. Sorry, this is the seed of life. And this is, there's one through eight here. It does not include nine, but any of these axes that you, that you poke an axis through equals nine. So it has to do with a vector nine mathematics, but this is the seed of life. So I see this, I see this as the start of a project, a start of a craft, the beginning of a birth, a new life type of idea. So what they're saying is at the minimum, you can see this two ways. At the minimum, you need a seed of life. This is all you need. Um, it does, it seems like it's encoded with the kingdom of heaven here. It's a kingdom of heaven, a kingdom of God, seed of life. 
but this also equals 35, which is the eye, and I believe this is the ability to see, it encodes the pineal gland, plus the one, and that is you. The Colel rule, the observer, the collapser of the quantum wave, that's all that's needed. And then, looks like from this word, you can balance this. This is in the middle. Maybe, maybe they think they're the seed of life, but I think that uh, when this word was chosen, someone wise coded this to show the way out or to show the balance. You know, like this is like the balance point, see? So if this, this would be the min, and then you have the ill, uh, I guess I'm going to maybe put the U towards the center because of the symbolism of it, and then the Ati is over here. This is 30, this is Bible Eagle Alice, but Alice is another idea of the Colel rule of one. She's the one in the dream. She drives the dream, and she knows she drives the dream, and she happens to be female. Which is just uh, the divine feminine, the intuition, the ability to, you know, just see the patterns in the dark. Not that it's, you need the right genitalia, you just, we all are supposed to be a balance of each of these. 33. 36, 21, and 30. All right, well, uh, I do this to try to make it so my page isn't so messy so I can possibly read it later. This all equals 120. Now there's 10 letters in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, you can see the clock reference. Uh, this this is a drawing of a diagram. I, you've probably all seen this where the Illuminati are all sitting around, or the skull and bones picture, where they're all sitting around a clock. And we know that clocks are super central to them. So this, of course, this is a clock reference. But there's 10 of these, so you divide it by 10 and you get your, your 12 hours. But the 12 is just half, right? Oh, I guess we could write it here. All right, um, okay, I showed you this, I showed you that. Oh, I wanted to show you a human being. So he, um, Marty offers this as a, as a hopeful counterbalance to Illuminati equals 35, Skull and Bones equals 35, 15 equals 35. I want to get to why he talks about 15 here. It's pretty interesting, it has to do with pi, and we always talk on our channel about how they worship pi. Pi is everywhere. So I haven't brought that up yet. Um, but he offers human being as a balance. You are the one. I wrote his name here because I'm always interested about the author's interaction with the codes that are coming to him. So his name is in being. This is Lee. That's part of his name. Okay, and then it's also leads. Like he, he kind of leads there's more to it. Well, anyway, he offers this as a counterbalance. So that's hopeful. Now, so he, on this, on his channel, um, he sh sh talks about that we, uh, places to find pi, and, we, and on our channel we find pi a lot of places, and it's right there on the number line, 13, 14, 15. And uh, we're all amazed. We didn't. I'm, I'm amazed. I didn't see this. And probably, if you haven't seen this, you're like, "Oh my gosh, we didn't see that, really." This is going to have um, placement. This is going to have more placement code associated with. It. So I'm going to look more deeply into this. But it ends. It ends with the 15. So if we add this, uh, if we add. So what? If you take this is the menorah code here. For the, for the word 13, the word 14, and the word 15. 
And this is why they have 15 in their skull and bones picture, as Marty points out. This is the 14 is the number of the phalanges on the hand, right? Sorry, bad hand here. I didn't mean to put six. Um, but this is the beginning of the star matrix mirror, the 37, 73, 12, 21 prime mirror of the craft or the creation. So we see the hand and they talk about the hidden hand. One of the hands should of course be man's hand. And I think that the Illuminati think the other hand is hidden. Um, and then a lot of, um, it depends on how, what you think. Some, many people think that the hidden hand has to do with a ritual where they give their lives over to a demon. And then basically they're, they're basically a demon puppet after that. And then that is the hand that has a hand in the creation the 3637, um, people are going to be like, um, what is this about? This is a star matrix number. Um, but this, it comes up in the code as symbolic of the craft. And if I, if I geometria this, we would have, we would have some of this code in here. And this is the 12th prime and this is the 21st prime. And this of course adds to a 33. So this is why I keep referring to this. I do believe it also refers to divine creation, a part, a, the, our whole complete divine creation, which is the evolution of consciousness on our, on our planet. But the powers that be also seem to encode this into their own uh, little tiny projects, which are starting to bother all of us. Well, um, 13, adds to um, 41 in the simple geometry. Now 41 is also the opposite of the hand. Now the hand, uh, if you see this as divine, because of course, like a God made the hand and it has five fingers. So it's divine and it has perfect, you know, golden ratio and everything. Sorry, I drew it badly. Well, so 41 would be like backwards of this. Now in in simple geometry, 41 also equals blind, which is another reference to backwardness. I, uh, which actually is supposed to refer to your pineal gland, and um, I've showed you this before, but in the simple, in the, uh, sorry, in the menorah geometria, pi is 35, which goes back again to the pineal gland. The, the, the seeing within, once you have your pineal gland activated, you can no longer be lied to and you no longer really have to go to school anymore because as soon as you wonder something, the answer comes usually within the next 24 hours or instantly, depending on how clear you are. Well, blind equals 41. And if you minus, if you take away the hex from the blind, you end up with the seeing and the, this is, it seems like it's referring to, a, a, you know, looking out through your eyes, but I think it's actually the pineal gland. So you remove the hex. Now you could think of our physical life as a spell, right? You could think of it as, you know, you know, as an illusion, it's a spell. We are blinded. Um, in the Bible, it says that you are the, the eyes are your thieves that you are actually blinded by your eyes because they put a hex on you and they make you think a lot of things and they, they cause you to not use your pineal gland. Um, okay. So this is going to be a good little review for a lot of things. Maybe I should put a review in the title because, uh, this goes back to the Globus Cruciger, uh, in the cosmology of our world. Many people think that our world is an eye cosmology and it has to do with the scarab, uh, tor toroidal field of the scarab beetle um, of ancient Egypt, which encodes a structural pigmented surface. And there's a lot of um, evidence to suggest that our, if, that our sky is reflective and it's uh, structurally pigmented. Our starlight is seen to be circularly polarized, which can only come from a structurally pigmented um, surface. And also the reflective surface of our sky explains how the rotation of the stars in the sky. 
which is one of the main arguments that people say, um, one of the main arguments that people say to put down the idea that the heli that the globul um, the heliocentric globular Earth model isn't true. They say, okay, well, how do you explain that this you know the stars are going different ways in the sky? You have to be rotating. This also explains it. If this is a reflective surface, and this is also encoded when you see these priests tip up the chalice. I told you that the chalice is important. If they tip it up then the upper becomes the lower, okay? This is a tipped up chalice. If you tip this up, the upper becomes the lower, and you will see if you have your eyes open, and some of these chalices have sixes and nines written in them, and they do this so that the viewer will notice that the, um, that the image that's reflected here flips depending on how far away you are. So say say you were on a lens-shaped Earth. If you were over here in the southern hemisphere, you're going to be much, much closer to the reflective surface. And if you take a spoon and you move it towards you and away from you, you will see the image reflect depending on how close you are. I mean, flip. It's going to flip. This is why we have all this mirror stuff, all of this mirror symbolism going on. Well, if you live here in the northern hemisphere, you're going to be farther away. And so you're going to see the stars move like this. This is the idea. Now, this came from Casey at Enter the Star, so I want to really credit him for the, um, he didn't do the chalice part, and he didn't do this part, but he he decoded the scarab into the ref, uh, a pigmented surface which has a, a reflective back. So he decoded that, and um and then I, I was watching that, and then I realized that, and then he was talking about the eye, the the codes about the eye in the Bible. You you know you're the apple of God's eye, all this kind of thing. And this is a toroidal field and, you know, the apple symbolism and just all the symbolism is kind of hidden in plain sight for us. Um, and then we have royals holding the Globus Cruciger here. They just hold it. And we know that, and this is also in the hieroglyphs of the ancient pharaohs. And also in the hieroglyphs of the ancient pharaohs, they have this word. Ow, my finger hurts. Ooh, ee-ah, ee-ah. And I think this is supposed to be a T. Well, it's the domain. And it's not really a lens-shaped earth, but it's the cornea with the lens-shaped earth inside. It's that kind of idea. Now, of course, the, Egypt, the Egyptian academics are going to tell you that, you know, a very powerful pharaoh is going to have the word basket in his name. And, you know, I just feel like it would be like, Oops, I accidentally spilt my drink on you. That's ridiculous. I mean, I don't know if I could stand there with a straight face and watch intellectuals talk about that, but this is the this is the Globus Crucicus. We see the royals and we even see Yahshua. In my intro and my outro, I show you that there's a picture in these churches of Yahshua sitting inside of this and his feet are on the four corners of the earth. This is the idea of the dome. The four is the D. And we tip this backward, and it's a dome. Again, and that's like that's a dome. Like the U is a dome. Um, this is now when I was in Paris um, with with Google Earth, and we found the the unborn twins in Isis's womb over there in Paris. Near the twins, they they made they they grew some toys for the twins and one of them was a splendor serpent which uh honors marduk ra or Arm amun ra this is who every when you say splendor when you say amen i don't know if i spelled that right um you are saluting gosh okay i can't write today you're saluting amun ra marduk ra whose mascot is the splendor serpent you know, that's all, you know, it's, it's okay if you want to do that. I just think you should know. Uh, 
Well, anyway, there's a dragon head over there. The Splendor Serpent has an eye and a nose that have different colored um, roofs on the head so that you can tell for sure that they're talking about this. And it has a, a connection to the back of its eye. Well, if you look in, uh, this is this is also in my intro, my outro, and I haven't explained this in a while. You have your two eyes, and then they cross in the back, and this is called the optic chiasma. There's your eyeballs. This is the optic chiasma right here, and this is where things get chaotic because you're blending according to, you know, the uh, the Bible. You have your good eye and your bad eye, so it's symbolic. It's symbolic brain symbol symbolism. Well, there, this is the crossing. This is where you need to walk the path. You need to integrate the information. This is where you come into play. And guess what's right behind here is your pineal gland, and that is the all-seeing, the all-knowing. So this is the whole idea of the Glavis Cruciger. So I'm going to put review in the title here, even though we did start out with a skull and bones um, and Illuminati thing, and hopefully um, I have a, a lot, a, nice, a little chunk of review here. Um, welcome anybody who's new. I know this got to be a little bit long. I don't know if I covered everything. Let me um, pause this again, take a look. Okay, a few more things I want to mention. 13, 14, and 15, we talked about that. We talked about the meanings of these numbers. This would be blind. Um, and you need, and this is also symbolic, 13 is also half of the alphabet. Then the whole alphabet seems to be um, Yahweh or the Tetragrammaton or Pi derived by seven twice. Now if we add all this, we have another Freemason number. And I was, when I first started this video, I was like, okay, we need, probably need to just keep an eyeball on this date, so to speak. This 11, um, this 11th, third, uh, November 3rd was the Freedom Tower date, and that is an Orion um, installation over there. And I've shown that in my Rigel video that has Simpsons in it. Where in the Simpsons they say, it, by amazing circumstance, Regillian and English happen to be the same language, so we don't need a translator. That's a little bit of a clue right there. Uh, the other way, uh, 311, that's Fukushima. And if you make this into a mirror, this is 313 BC, which is the start of the long count of the Mayan, um, uh, sorry, long count of the sun cycle, the, the destructive sun cycle. And what they are talking about is this day after tomorrow concept of the Arctic blob and the cooling. Um, it's like it's like a global warming cycle that goes into a sudden ice age cycle. And, and the Mayans talked about this. They predicted it. And then it happened to them in 647 AD. And they died out because they didn't get any rain. And also just the sun during these cycles. I think it, I forget how long it takes them to die out. Probably two, one or 200 years. They became infertile because that's part of the, the sun will actually shut down the, the fertility cycle of everything. Crops, people, birds, just slow it down. Um, so this is a date that, because this is also a Pi date and it's a Mayan long count of the sun date, I, I just feel like we need to take a look at this when it comes up. So the when it comes up here, coming up pretty soon, um, I'm just going to draw an 8 here for the 2015. I just want to show you that this is raw. The, the your outer valence of this date is raw. And then if we add this in, it's 22. And we've seen this 11, 22 uh, symbolism everywhere. Everywhere, it seems like. So this date coming up, this 11-3, not only is it a Freemason number, not only is it a Freedom Tower number, not only is it a long count of the Mayan cycle sun number, not only is it a Fukushima number, but it's also an 11-22 number. Now, um, I don't know if um, if other people have seen this, probably just some like really scary insiders have seen this, but I did a video, I did a video series, it's a playlist called um, 4 and 20 Blackbirds Baked in a Pie. It's the long... Uh, it's like a page of pie. Now, the long amount of pie, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to read this again. 
I'm gonna try to cover all this in a second. Um, let's go over here. Oh, let's go over here. Pi. All right. So the eleven, that one thousand one hundred and twenty-second decimal place of pi is the first place that we see this number. This is a Bride of Christ number. This is the Mother Mary number, the Virgin Mary number. Um, let's go back to this page where it says it. Um, Marty McFly, this is Bride of Christ, Valley of Death, Mother Mary, Virgin Mary, Columbus Day, Stock Market, Snow White, Will of God, Great Awakening, Right Hand, Heaven on Earth newspapers, and probably many more. You see this, is, this also has that Mayan anagram in it, right? Well, and then Robert Zemeckis, who made this movie, he's only one the away from this. His, his name equals the Bride of Christ, the Valley of Death, the Virgin Mary. So this guy is a time traveler who, who comes to warn Doc about terrorists. And he basically, there's a huge warning in here about 9-11. And he, this basically Robert Zemeckis saying that he is a time traveler and he has come to warn and so it's interesting i don't i don't know if this is a good guy or a scary guy but this bread of christ number um this is all very interesting the great awakening the right hand of god and then we have the it's also encoded in the long count of pi and the hundred one thousand one hundred and twenty second place this is the first place where it's written like this I wrote Orion here. Um, it's just, it's too hard to get on, you know, like tie every topic in. But this is the idea. If you go back to my Ankara Turkey video, this is the idea of why he does not have lower legs or a head, right? There's the head and the lower legs. So this is an Orion symbol. And it also has to do with the Chiro and the pie and the cross. And that's, um, that's an Orion symbol. Okay, let me pause and make sure I, I said everything. All right, so um, Marty doesn't say where he got what he calls, um, simp he calls it English gematria, which I call menorah or pie-based gematria. So um, I think he doesn't say that he invented it, so I think he got it from a book or from some kind of um, wisdom text. But it's also encoded in the Skull and Bones picture where the clock is in the center. This is the seven. So the clock would be the seven. And then we have the six on either side. This is the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. So there's more to say here about this code, about 35, about 3.5, about... Um, there's, there's, there, I'm, I'm not bringing you everything, but um, I think I think I got 98% of it that I wanted to say. All right, I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I hope this was a good review. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.